Welcome back to the Volvo 480 restoration video uh, and this is part two of the brake recaliper rebuild set. So uh, as you remember in part one uh, I painted and I got the both sides uh, front and rear of one side of the car off. Um, paint is now nice and dry and in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the rebuild kit putting them back together and uh, hopefully we'll get them back on the car and tested and that should uh, they should be looking good so remember if you like the video please do pop a comment down the bottom and remember of course subscribe as well would love to see your comments and if there's any questions you've got on the Volvo 480 please let me know uh, but let's uh, let's get on and let's get these calipers rebuilt We're now a few days later the caliper's nice and dry so we need to clean that off a couple of things you might have noticed um i've got a proper microphone on me now so hopefully you can hear me and we won't get all of the wind noise all of the time and packages arrived which hopefully is what we've been waiting for we've got a few parts here we've got uh, this which is i think it's the rear yeah, it's a rear brake hose, which I thought I might need. Actually, that might double up as a front brake hose. Double check in case any of those are a bit dodgy because they, they didn't look great when they were on the car. So that's arrived. And we have our rebuild kit. Uh, front and rear rebuild kit. I only got one for now. That looks like the front to me. And that looks like the rear so uh, we'll be able to take a look at those and rebuild the calipers and then get them back on the car so uh, I'll give that a go and see how I get on just to go over what what I've got here um, first of all that's the that's the front kit in the bag there there's actually both sides in there so that's ideal put that to one side concentrate on the rear this is the rear so what we've got in the kit is we've got the rubber seal for the piston uh, we've got these which are the rubber for the sliders which is good we've got the two end caps for the sliders to keep the dust out you can see those go on there like that that's great we have that which is the small I don't know if you can even see that that's the dust cap for the bleed valve I'll come on to that in a minute so that's good uh, what else have we got we've got the metal retaining clip like that uh, we've got another seal not quite sure where that's from to be honest with you we'll have to have a look for that um, We've also got these two, a small o-ring and a larger plus, uh, larger rubber. And to be honest with you, I've got no idea where those come from unless they're inside. They might be inside. Might need to take this out and see. In fact, no, I can't see anything in there. Ah, oh, I can see a an o-ring on the inside of there that'll be that one that makes sense those two not sure about we'll see if we find them if we don't I'm not going to worry about those so what I'm going to do is get these off uh, and then I think we can start to build it back together see how easy these parts go back on as part of this something that uh, that I forgot last time and thanks to Ali for pointing this out to me as well um, I didn't take off this I didn't take off the bleed valve and make sure that it's all clean so I've just done that now 
going to give it a bit of a clean up as well as the the threads on it as well nothing worse than this sticking you can see rust wise it's in a bit of a bad state so i'm going to give it a wire brush get this cleaned up a little bit so that when it's back on it's nice and easy to to, uh, to bleed it also on the end of this one on the volvo is the adjustment so i've already had this off but basically what you do is uh, it's a kind of a hex nut on the end which is this piece take this off that's the cover and you'll see inside there's another one smaller hex nut which if i put that in what that allows me to do is if i turn it you can see it turns the wind in and the wind out mechanism that's the manual adjustment for the handbrake so that's important that we have that free and easy to move as well so just freed that off as well so we know that those are all good so i think this caliper is ready to be rebuilt so we'll move on with that now what can i say about that process well it's not the easiest i've got to say trying to get everything lined up the rubber seal everything all back together nicely isn't easy um would i tackle it again well yes because i'm going to tackle it on the other one because i'm going to tackle it on the other side but it's not an easy process to be honest with you i'm just going to give this a bit of a clean up try and get this as as nice and free as possible um yes making a bit a bit more of a mess here um what have i learned for next time well that i need to stay a bit cleaner on my bench because what i found is that because of all of the little particles of grit and bits and pieces on this i kept having to clean out the mechanism time after time which isn't ideal because the inside of this you want as clean as possible um, you can see this the spring motions working quite nicely now so that's not bad going so let's uh, let's clean up a little bit here um, also the order of everything is quite important as you can probably imagine um, so it took me a couple of goes to actually get the order correct so i knew what i was doing in the right sequence but again that's just a learning thing that was the whole point of doing this really so i think that rear caliper is practically back together now let's put the um the bleed screw back on just tighten that back up yeah, we've got not too tight because we'll be needing that might as well put the new cap on it as well that we got in the kit that's that i've decided not to renew the sliders because actually the sliders are decent what i'm going to do clean them out a little bit put a little bit of grease uh, copper slip or uh, red high temperature grease on those they should be fine as well and uh, then i think this is ready to go back on the car and there we have it that's our front caliper rebuilt so we've got the, the rubber seal round got the piston pushed in which when you line the piston up it does actually slide in with it you've got to use a little bit of force but you know that it's fitted right if you need to use excessive force then it's not quite lined up properly um we'll put the put the bleed valve back in don't need that too tight because we'll be using that when we put it back on the car and there we go i think that's now ready to be fitted back on the car so all good front and rear ready to go let's get them back on the car
getting the rear caliper back into place all looking good except sometimes my own stupidity even exceeds my own expectations you may notice there's a pad missing I've got one badly chewed up but for testing it out is fine I know I know I need to get new brake pads and probably discs all round but for now it's going to be fine there's a pad missing of course I had a tidy up recently in the garage and I've thrown the other pad out so can't really put this back on so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the brake line I'm going to fasten it back into place so I can put the wheel back on and then I'm going to have to order a set of replacement pads for it a little bit earlier than I planned. There's a downside to uh, tidying up. That's why I always tell my wife, you know. The more that I tidy up, the more I seem to screw up. One day, I'm not going to tidy up. And you know something, I'll probably find everything that I need that day. Anyhow, let's get this back on. A little bit fiddly, I know I'm doing this a little bit backwards, but I just want to get the thing on and in place now. Let's just get that lined up. I might not get enough room in the back there. What I'd like is I'd like to have these in place and then attach the brake line because then I've got something solid I'm working from. It's not going to suddenly fall or put too much stress on the brake lines. I'm not sure, I may end up having to replace all the flexi hoses because this one doesn't look in great shape as I suspected. But looking at it, if you remember, I did get a spare delivered, but looking at it now, that looked like it was a front brake line, not a rear. So I think we'll replace that when we come to do the front. There we go. That's going to hold it on sufficiently for now. I think that'll just have to do for now. A little bit of brute force just to put things in there their right place. You can see the sliders are working lovely on there. Impressed with that. Uh, handbrake cable. Handbrake cable going through there. Don't think I'll attach that yet. What I'm going to do is get the get the hose connected up first. So I'll get that done. I'll be back in a moment. So with the rear fitted, here we go with the front. And this is the one with the the painted caliper so hopefully this is going to look quite good I've also you see fitted the new brake line so need to disconnect and feed that but we'll do that once we're in place um, this time I do actually have the brake pads as well which is a bit of a bit of a bonus for me rather than like the abomination of the rears so let's, uh, let's get these in place. Not sure how much of this you're going to see because it is a scorchingly red hot day today, which is rather nice, makes a change. But it might mean that it's a bit difficult to see what uh, what you can on this. So I'll continue on and see how I get on. Just whilst I'm fastening this up, just thought I'd mention that um, there are a few people that I want to say thank you to whilst I've been doing this work. Um, quite a few people help me out with advice and things like that. When you're restoring any of these cars, the... Um, the forums, there's, there tends to be a forum for most cars and Volvo 480 forum is packed of excellent members so uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link to them in the description. The other person I have to say is my wife Michelle because there's a lot of time involved with this. You, 
what you don't see is making one of these videos does take up an awful lot of time. Um, and it's not just the time out here actually doing the work on the car. There's all of the time involved with editing the videos, uploading them, and just generally researching. And then of course there's buying all of the parts. There's a considerable amount of parts and money getting invested to get this back on the road, when considering really, it is just a daft hobby as well. So I have to say thank you to Michelle for, for putting up with me whilst I do all of this and all of my other odd projects that I do. I will actually get to the end of some project one day, but we shall see. Um, right, I need to try and release the... Oh, one other person, or <laughs> another company. As you know, there's no sponsorship or anything to any of these videos. Um, but I'll tell you what, if WD-40 would like to send me some free cans of WD-40, it would really, really come in useful because the number of cans I'm buying, I'm sure they're going to think I'm drinking them in the shop or something, or running the car on them because I'm going through them like crazy. Just... It's just part of the job. They're, they're a great tool for helping to free off things. And uh, so, yeah, thanks to the mix of WD-40 as well, I suppose. So, almost there. Just need to try and get this released a little bit, and I can get the new brake line on as well. Now, hopefully this is a bit of an ooh moment, because what have we got? We've got our new brake line on. You can see the fittings all lovely. What I had to do was take this bracket off take it all out now I did get a few drips coming out of the ABS system as you'd expect so I've caught them in the bottom of this bottle not too much came out I did have the cap at the top closed so in theory it shouldn't have been dripping too much but we'll need to check the fluid levels remember like I said I'm not too worried about that because I am gonna have to change the brake fluid because who knows how long that's been in the system Let's just clip this, the ABS sensor on. I've just tightened that up. That's looking pretty neat. So, all in all, I'm starting to look quite pleased with my bit of work on this. Need to just tighten those up a little bit, make sure they're tight. And then I think this one is now a rebuild. Oh, need to bleed the air out. Yes, need to do that next. So, what we'll do is I'll tighten those up, undo that, and uh, I'll get an assistant to help out and I'll bleed what I can out of this one. Um, not much point in doing the rear, I don't think, um, because it's because of the pad problem. I have to get those pads ordered, so. But I think that's, uh, that's not looking too bad. So there we have it. It's not exactly running smoothly, but I think over time that should be okay. So I'm gonna drop it back down. And uh, so that's one side of the, uh, the, the brakes, the calipers rebuilt. So it's then onto the next side. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And um, please do remember to subscribe as well because I uh, really appreciate everyone subscribing getting involved with it and um, also don't forget on Facebook we also have the new uh, page to like which is junk and driving uh, I'll put a link in the comments below and uh, you can get involved with that as well uh, and other than that for now I've got to say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.